Hello, my friends. We are now getting into the story of Samson a little bit further now. Now, it, it says here that Samson saw one of the daughters of the Philistines. Let's remember, these are, these are people of the land, people that are actually ruling over Israel. Be, why? Because conquest has not actually been done entirely by the people of God. So there are continued to be certain people in the land. Some of them now have the upper hand against the Israelites, particularly as it relates to the tribe of Dan. Samson is in this tribe of Dan. So Samson sees one of these daughters of the Philistines, and he t says to his father and mother, according to the custom of the day, he said, now get her for me as my wife. But his father and mother are entirely shocked about this. Can't you, can't you find someone from among the daughters of your own people? Um, but Samson says, no. He says something puzzling. Get her for me, for she is right in my eyes. And the Hebrew word that's used there is righteous. This is repeated later on when he has an interaction with this woman. So he went down and talked with the woman. She was right. She was righteous in Samson's eyes. As New Testament believers, we're, we're, we're really interested in this. We think about somehow, how could we who are unworthy, who are outside of the covenant of God's promise, be counted as right, righteous in his eyes. We know it's through the blood of Christ. So in any case, what we have here is there ends up being a contest uh, in, in connection with this wedding between the Philistine woman and Samson. There's a whole wedding feast. There's a period of days that they're together. And Samson proposes a riddle for them. Now, they need to figure out this riddle, and if they figure it out, then Samson uh, owes them some property. If they're unable to figure it out, then they owe Samson some property, and the property has to do with garments, 30 linen garments and 30 changes of clothes. So what is this riddle all about? Well, Samson had uh, had uh, killed a lion. And it, this was something, again, the Spirit of the Lord coming upon him. He has this great strength and tears this lion apart and then later comes back. And it, there, there's a swarm of bees that has uh, taken up residence within the body of the lion. He scoops up some honey and he's eating as he, he goes. He comes to his father and mother and gives them some of the honey they ate. Uh, but he didn't tell them where the honey came from. All right, so very strange episode, but Samson makes up a riddle from this whole episode. He says, out of the eater came something to eat. Out of the strong came something to sweet, something sweet. So th this whole episode is so unusual that you would think, well, if this happened to you, you were about to be attacked by a lion. You killed that lion with your bare hands. Later, you come by and you, you get some honey from it. You know, surely at one point or the other, you would have told everybody this story, but he didn't. He didn't. This was all something he hid within his own soul, not even telling his parents about what had happened. So he gives this riddle, and of course, three days go by, and the Philistine uh, companions that are there with him as part of the whole wedding ritual, these they, they can't figure out this riddle. Uh, and so on the fourth day, they go after Samson's bride, bride-to-be, and they threaten her. They say, we're, gonna, we're going to burn down your, your father's house with fire. So we'll, we'll burn you, we'll burn your father, we'll burn your whole family unless you figure it out. You've got to pressure Samson. So she's, she's frightened. She starts this whole work of finding out. And after a while, Samson actually does tell her what the riddle is about. And then they come back and say, what is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? He says this to them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have found out my riddle. All right, he's talking about his, uh, his bride-to-be. So the Spirit of the Lord again comes upon Samson. He gets the garments for them. He gets the change of clothing, but he does it by actually uh, destroying some of the people of Ashkelon 
and bringing back then the, the property that is from the Philistines originally. What's going on here in this strange chapter? See, Samson is engaged in the conquest, seemingly the only one in the tribe of Dan who is. And God had said to destroy these people uh, in the land, but instead they're, they're actually ruling over Israel. And Samson, this mighty man who's full of the spirit of the Lord that the Lord is using in this strange way, he's actually doing conquest. And, you know, um, this is all according to God's judgment, God's plan. God's using Samson in that way. And sometimes we don't understand that. But look, look how God used Jesus. Let us pray. Oh, Father, what a victory you won for us through your son, Jesus Christ. We never would have done it the way that you did it, Lord. But what a conquest over evil he has accomplished. We're so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friends.